my name is Luke Marion, and I am doing my uh, presentation on Maximilian I, the Holy Roman Emperor. There were more than one Maximilians, as there were um, a lot in monarchy. Um, I did this video and presentation. The House of Habsburg expanded uh, and took over many other uh, countries during the late Middle Ages to Renaissance era. Um, he had numerous political marriages to acquire land. Um, the Holy Roman, Roman Empire expanded, as I said. The Habsburg Chin, um, Maximilian is a Habsburg. Uh, the Habsburg Chin is, was inherited through inbreeding. And uh, also, Maximilian influenced the armor of the time. And I have a these are all slides. <coughs> uh, inbreeding was also a big problem in the Habsburg line. It went on for almost 200 years because they thought it was uh, kept the purity of the bloodline. Um, we all see the problem with that now, hopefully. In um, Maximilian's uh, childhood, he was born in Wiener Nistout on the 22nd of March, 1459. Maximilian was besieged at an early age and hunted on, uh, and he hunted on horseback in his free time. He and his parents were besieged in Vienna by, Al by Albert of Austria. This was only when he was an infant. Um, at the young age of 18, Maximilian inherited all of Burgundy from his first wife's deceased father, Charles the Bold. And sorry that that photo is pretty low quality, but is what it is. Um, that's his life. That's his wife, Mary of Burgundy. Uh, Maximilian was elected the King of the Romans on the 16th of February, 1486, at the age of 27. Um, he he would only live to be about 59, so um, it's pr it's about half the life, <laughs> about half of his life, so. Um, uh, Maximilian personally led his men into army into battles such as the Battle of Wenzenbach in 1504. Um, he did uh, receive some wounds, and he had a leg wound that uh, hurt that was hurting him for the rest of his life, and it was extremely painful. Maximilian gave very specific instructions for his body after death. He wanted his hair to be cut off and his knee and his teeth knocked out, and the body was to be whipped and covered with lime and ash and wrapped in lin linen. It is suggested that Maximilian was morbidly depressed from 15 and, uh, 14. He traveled everywhere with his coffin, and that's a picture or painting of Maximilian uh, when he was dead. So here's the point I want to cover. Habsburg incest. Um, the Habsburg bloodline from the 15th century spanning to the 17th century was riddled with incest. It finally came to a point in the late 16th century where the only monarchs left to marry were other Habsburgs. Thus, records indicate rampant incest through most of the Habsburgs' 200-year uh, reign in Spain in the 16th and 17th centuries. Inbreeding resulted in deformations such as the famous Habsburg chin, and on the lower right, the lower right picture is a picture of Charles II, who was a uh, extremely, for lack of a better word, um, disabled. His chin protruded so far that his that there were gaps in his lower teeth that were recorded to be about a centimeter wide, um, and he was impotent. Um, fortunately. Maximilian escaped this genetic plague and was a functioning ruler of the Roman Empire, which was uh, not always the case, unfortunately. Uh, armor and influence in the Renaissance. Maximilian armor was a style of uh, early 16th century armor that was originally made for the emperor's collection. This armor not only had fluting that helped with deflecting the points of arrows, daggers, and swords, to help with the overall strength of the armor and weight. 
Now, a point I wanted to touch on, on this uh, jousting armor, the picture in the middle, the largest one, you can see those circular, uh, circular um, armor pieces around the, um, around the shoulder and the armpit. Those were for, so say if the, a lance was to hit, it wouldn't kill them because that would be a key point that uh, people would try to stab into because that was the least protected. But still there would be at least three layers of chain mail underneath. Um, this style of armor was commonly used by even the emperor himself in jousting tournaments uh, for added style and effectiveness. The armor was de designed to imitate the pleated clothing that was considered fashionable in Europe at the time. So as you can see on the what would be going over the thighs, uh, it kind of looks like it's pleated and it goes in a certain wavy pattern. And that's because um, there would be like quilted and such as pleated uh, clothing that was worn during the Renaissance era. Um, and here are some other pictures. A, a sallet on the top right um, that Maximilian wore. It was a field armor. Um, so that meant means he wore it into battle. He would usually lead his men. He wouldn't fight as much. And Maximilian uh, tournament armor. That is not a Maximilian, but it, it is a style. Of armor, and you can see a, a tournament going on with uh, war hammers. And that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have any quit, oh wait, no. Um, well, that's the end of this. Uh, good luck to the next dude.